Imagine this. You go to bed on Monday night as normal. The weather for Tuesday calls for breezy winds and some rain. Instead, you get hit by a Category 5 hurricane, with winds gusting nearly 160 miles per hour. Most of what you know and love is now destroyed, the town in shambles. That's exactly what happened in Acapulco, Mexico. Otis intensified faster than any other Pacific hurricane on record, and hit stronger too. This is the story of Mexico's first Pacific Category 5. On Monday morning, we published a roundup of the tropics. I talked about Otis in my forecast, but said that it would remain a tropical storm. All of the weather models projected Otis would have winds below 60 miles per hour. They were off by a difference of more than 100 miles per hour. It wasn't a secret that Otis was over a region of bath-like warm waters. The sea surface temperature measured just off Acapulco was around 85.1 degrees. But computer models expected some disruptive shear, or changing winds with height, to knock Otis off kilter. That would prevent it from growing stronger. As it turns out, the models were wrong. Otis went from a tropical storm to a Category 5 in an unprecedented 12 hours, the fastest such intensification on record in the Eastern Pacific. It jumped in strength 110 miles per hour in 24 hours. Only Patricia, in 2015, did worse, and weakened before reaching land. Otis didn't. As Otis was strengthening, the hurricane hunters flew inside. Two passes, 80 minutes apart. A historic 10 millibar drop in air pressure between the two. Otis was becoming a vacuum buzzsaw. There is some possibility that an approaching jet stream dip, or trough, helped suck air away from the top of Otis. That helped it to pull up warm air from below like a chimney, strengthening even more. Winds gusted to 133 miles per hour on Roqueta Island, just offshore of Acapulco. The only small piece of good news was that the eye made landfall just south of the city. That put Acapulco in the northern eye wall. Still furious winds, but a bit weaker and offshore. If the winds had been onshore, as is the case south of the eye wall, a devastating or catastrophic storm surge would have resulted. The scope of the damage was only beginning to become apparent Wednesday afternoon. Most communication lines are severed. Information can't flow in and can't flow out. But it's impossible to hide from the fact that the weather enterprise utterly failed the people of Mexico. The question now becomes, what were we missing? This one is, it's mysterious to me, I think it's mysterious to everyone, how this happened. David Ryglicki is my radar's tropical weather expert. He says meteorologists don't know why models couldn't see Otis's intensification coming. And again, I think it just comes back to internal dynamics and internal processes. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, it just, the models just didn't get, it, it looks like the models just didn't have good initial guesses. He compared the storm to Hurricane Patricia, which strengthened 120 miles per hour in 24 hours back in 2015. It had peak winds of 215 miles per hour well offshore, but weakened into a Category 4 just before landfall. If we go back historically to Patricia, right? So Patricia was in an environment of basically zero shear, which never happens, and very warm SSTs around 31 degrees Celsius. So we had that this time. I don't think the models miss 31 degrees Celsius uh, ocean temperatures. And if you look at the ocean heat content, uh, it's there's a, a fair bit of it, but compared to like the Western Pacific or the Caribbean, it's really not anything special. So if you look at the environments and you say, we've seen this before, how could this be such a bad miss? It now comes down to internal processes. So there's some disconnect between the initialization of how the how the models see this hurricane to start and also what's going on as the convection is firing and doing all this stuff in the inner core that these models just weren't capturing. In 2017, MIT hurricane researcher Carrie Emanuel published a paper calling Otis's rate of intensification, quote, virtually non-existent in the 20th century. Now it's seemingly happening every five to 10 years. Emanuel also projected extreme rapid intensification could become 10 to 20 times more common by the end of the century. Still, some piece of the puzzle is missing. Yeah, and especially when it comes to tropical cyclones. You know, you mentioned 
Kerry Emanuel's uh, theory, uh, rapid intensification discussion, right? Well, you know, his first theory, the wind induced uh, surface heat exchange, WISHI, came out in 1986. And since then, it has shown to be uh, deficient in a number of areas. And as you incorporate into the system these deficiencies, like you account for them, you can see that there are these intensification rates that we didn't see possible before. So inner core dynamics, particularly for tropical cyclones, is something that's still an active area of research. And to say that we've solved it or figured it out, obviously not. In the meantime, Otis is gone. It's no longer a hurricane and has fallen apart inland. But the scars in Acapulco will last for many hurricane seasons to come. Follow My Radar on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.